everybody, Norm from Test here at E3. Now, at the Bethesda booth last year, it was our first chance to get a glimpse at these amazing Fallout Flea replicas. And it comes from the company of this man, Chris. Chris, you co-founded and the CEO of The One Company. That's it. You guys make amazing prop replicas from Star Trek, from Fallout. Where did they all begin? Uh, well, we started with a, a magic wand. We had this idea of making a magic wand that you could wave about to control things. It's sort of Harry Potter. Uh, my, my, my story was that the Harry Potter story is all about the wand. So I thought if we made a wand, people would really like it. So that's why we started. That's why it's called the Wand Company. Oh, it makes, makes total sense. And interactivity is a lot of the hallmarks of the prop set you Indeed. make. Indeed, because detail, actually what my, one of my catchphrases for my company is owning is believing. My feeling, I very much believe in the fantasy world coming into the real world. I think that's what kids do when they play with boxes and they, they make them into things. And as grown-ups, we lose a little bit of that, and I want to bring that back. So in terms of all the products we do, I add things like postcards, we add special manuals, we add things that are in-universe. And we try to treat the, we do treat the properties with respect. We, we are sensitive, we love them, and we hope the fans understand that. Well, they have definitely a passion for these brands and for these products. Yeah. The Pip-Boy you made came in a wonderful case, as if it was issued by the company. Yeah. You assemble it yourself, and this year you're showing off add-ons that you've designed. Can you run me through some of these add-ons? Yeah, absolutely. So the original was a kit. There was no way in the time frame we had where we could build a fully working pit boy which we would have liked to have done. So we got the idea of making a kit which we thought would be very interactive. And then we presented it, as you said, in a very 1950s way. And that was quite easy to do that. But we wanted to make modules to upgrade that kit to functionality. The first one we started with is a radio. Um, you can see the radio here is actually a fully functioning FM radio. But the cool thing about it is that when you turn the dial to tune it, you actually tune it into broadcast from the wasteland. So, so pre-recorded sound clips overlaid on top of yes. real FM. I could be listening to music or yeah. sportscast yeah. and get so sound in, in, bites. Yeah, so in the actual radio itself, it's got a little toggle switch and a, a tuning knob. When you do the toggle switch, that's how you tune. You skip from channel to channel. When you turn the tuning knob, it plays some static hits and then it plays one of 20 broadcasts from the wasteland. The ones that have been specially recorded to be part of the, uh, the universe. And so, I love that they're, they're modules. They're, they're so kind of self-contained. Yeah. All the electronics ha and, and all the analog dials have to fit inside they do. this thing. And that, actually, we're very lucky because if you, you can see here the size of the module, it exactly fits an AA, AAA battery. <laughs> and that's really lucky because we didn't design it that way. We copied it from the game. Yeah. But the fact is that it's a very nice piece of engineering. The whole thing is completely contained. You get all the tools you need to make the upgrade. I mean, one of my favorite parts of putting together the, uh, the Pip-Boy kit was the dial. This rubber band behind it that yes. gave you the right amount of friction as you were trying to resist I'm glad you like that because that's a traditional way of tuning radios. Oh, really? Um, okay, I they, know had, that. they had a cord inside that went, and that's how the dial went up and down. And I spent about, uh, I did it actually in, in extremely quickly, but I spent a few weeks thinking, how can I make the dial work? The, the knobs on the outside and the dial were fixed by the game. And in the game, they don't have to work, really. But in real life, they have to actually work. And I was driving to work one day, and I suddenly thought, why don't I use a rubber band? And I could just drive them with that. And then once I'd done thought of that through, the design is quite simple. And but I'm glad you're very elegant. Yeah, something that doesn't have to work also in the real world is radiation detecting a Geiger counter, but it's in the Pip-Boy. You have a module here that takes advantage of that We do have spot. a module, it's around the side there, but yeah, what we want to do with, this, with the sensor is we looked at making a Geiger sensor. They're actually very expensive and they use quite long tubes. Mm. So uh, you'll know from a scientific point of view, but EM radiation is still radiation. It's on a slightly different part of the electromagnetic radiation scale. <laughs> EM radiation is the radiation that is emanating from uh, power cables. Yes. So we have made a sensor that senses EM radiation. <laughs> All right. So it senses EM radiation. It senses proximity, and it senses the Earth's magnetic field. And those are three separate sensors. You get them by pressing the buttons on the front, and the output is a moving galvanometer needle. So we have a real needle, and Geiger clicks. So when you move it near someone, if they're radioactive, you'll get the clicks. Coming lots through. of rads uh, there. Lots of great cosplay. Lots of imaginative play. Of course, it doesn't use any real radiation. It's EM radiation, That's which so is fun. still a it's still a kind of radiation. It's just not ionizing radiation. And of course, there is the display. I know that one of the first things people think about when they buy the kit is how can I upgrade the display. And you have an upgrade as well. We do have an upgrade for the display. Um, one of the things we would like to have done is we'd like to have had a really fully functioning display, uh, LCD, which looked like a CRT. 
The trouble is that really for that to be good, it would have to interact with the game. And that's a, an actual problem at the moment. We would have trouble doing that. Not, not technically, but I think from a point of view of getting interaction with the game. So the next best thing is to have a display that just lights up, that makes, finishes off the Pip-Boy and stops that screen looking like it's blank. So we've got a display, it's just a light up panel, but it is gorgeous, it's the home screen. But here's the cool thing, it has a malfunction function. So every so often it flickers like it's about to go off. And if you bang the top of it, it comes back on again. So it, it gives you a lot of the play value uh, without actually any of the actual screen functionality. The other thing to having a screen is that modern day screens are wide, wide, Yes, aspect screens, ratio. Yeah. Wide aspect ratio. And this is actually a traditional shape. It's very yeah. expensive. And we haven't got the market or the budget to have a special screen made. So unlike mobile phones, which make millions, there's only going to be a few thousand of these made. Right. It's just too expensive. Fans wouldn't be able to afford it. So this is a nice compromise, but it really looks cool. Well, it's going to look cool, especially on this last part. You're very excited. You're telling me this is a stand for the Pip-Boy, but also is... A Bluetooth speaker. Bluetooth speaker, And it's a kit. Ah, okay. And, and uh, the most exciting thing all is I designed the stand for the original Pip-Boy because there wasn't a stand. And then we didn't put it in the original Pip-Boy kit because it was too expensive. And um, I'm watching the trailer of 76. The guy goes to the thing, takes the thing off the stand, the Pip-Boy off the stand, my stand, and it's in the game. It's, so it's all sick of it. So yeah, yeah, it's art imitating art, imitating yes, art. Yes. So we said, hey, let's make a kit for it. And absolutely, and of course, the Fusion Flea, you have a different version of that. I see you have a giant Nuova Cola delivery truck, this die cast. How difficult is it to get these made? Because the, the finish, the paint finish is so good. I know, I know. Well, I'm, one, this is a new site and a new direction for us because I love in universe brands. There's Nuka Cola, there's Slocum's Joe, the donut delivery. I love imagining what those brands would be. Um, for, the, for the kits, for example, it's Robco, the brand that makes all the electronics. And I think it really brings the whole fancy to life. It brings the franchise to life. So the Nuka Cola truck is actually a truck based on um, a 1940s, 1950s uh, truck in America. So we were able to look at that and go back to the detail of the game, the truck in the game. But actually getting them made, there are some very, very talented people out there. So we've done the geometry, and then we go to a factory that does the die cast making, and the spraying is gorgeous. It is, yeah. it is automotive quality spraying. Yeah, yeah. We're collectors, and we can really appreciate like having one of these in our collection. They're, they're truly wonderful. I love that when you talk about the engineering, you're doing the design, you're doing the packaging, the in-universe stuff, the certificates. Well, this is a certificate here, but this one is, um, <laughs> this, uh, they're individual license plates that are all unique, and you get a registration document, which is yours to keep, so it's, of course it's I love plate. the whole thing. Yeah, it's very clear, your passion comes through, and as fans, we're grateful that someone like you is gonna put the effort in. Thank Pleasure to meet you, Chris. Thank you, lovely to meet you too.